Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another episode of Glass Half Full, a podcast and a safe platform where we talk with a variety of teachers, entrepreneurs, spiritualists, uplifters, givers, shakers, and serenaders. Everyone has a lesson to learn and a lesson to share. Let's use our life experiences to enrich someone's heart, mind, spirit, and soul. Through sharing our experiences, we can be a learning inspiration for one another. I'm your host, Chris Levins. Let's welcome today's guest. Today's guest is Loretta Scott, a.k.a. K. Mushichan, startup junkie by day and YouTuber by night. Loretta is a vibrant and animated polyglot who has been in the YouTube scene for over 10 years now. As a New York native, she specializes in helpful videos for Japan newcomers, as well as language-related content. Kemushi Chan is a vlogging veteran with more than 10 years under her belt. Featured on NBC as a YouTube educator, Loretta uses her channel to teach and encourage others to not only learn Japanese, but also learn how to learn. Let's welcome Loretta Scott. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hi. Thanks thank for you. having me. Yes. Hello. Thank you for taking some time out to be a guest on Glass Half Full. We're happy to have you today. This is such a pleasure. <laughs> well, we're going to jump right on in if that's okay. Let's do it. The first question I like to ask all my guests is, I feel our lives are in spiritual design. Can you share your life layout or blueprint with everyone? How you grew up, where, your family lifestyle? Yeah, so it goes all the way back. Right now I'm in Japan, but it goes all the way back to the States in a wonderful state known as Virginia. Uh, <laughs> Specifically, I grew up in the Northern Virginia area you know, just kind of down the street from DC. And my parents were always kind of movers and shakers themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. Originally, they were, uh, my dad was a businessman, and my mom is used to be a professor at Howard University. And then somewhere along the line, they turned into TV ministers, where they had their own Christian TV show, like twice a week. And wow. I was just that kid in high school <laughs> where everyone would come in and say, what's with your parents on TV? It's like, I don't know. Um, what I didn't realize was sometimes I would spend some evenings actually helping them with the cameras or like in the room, like with the videos editing live as they were doing the show. And I didn't realize that was kind of setting me up for this, you know, sensation, sensational love for media. Mm. And a couple years down the road, I guess I just couldn't take it anymore. And when YouTube became a thing, just uh, turned on the camera myself. Wow. And it, it originally became, or it originally was a language platform for me because, you know, about 14 years ago, believe it or not, that was the only place where I could practice Japanese in the States and get live feedback from a lot of different Japanese people. Wow. And then, yeah. And and then just as I kept going, it just turned into like a love for all sorts of media. So that's a really weird <laughs> little tendril of it. But that but that's a, a a large piece of what brought me to where I am today. Wow, nice. Uh, do you have any siblings? <laughs> I do. I am a. I'm the only girl, and then I have two older brothers and one younger brother. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, there's a in Japan. There's the the Dango San Kyodai, oh. the, the the story of the three Dango, and I feel like I never made it onto the the Dango thing. Maybe <laughs> I'm just the stick that holds them together. I don't know. I was about to I say people have no idea what is. Tell them what the Dango is. So it's a if it's a song. Dango is like a sweet treat in Japan that people like to eat, and uh, there is a song that came out a couple years back that was a, set to the tune of a tango. So, which in Japanese is pronounced tango. So it's kind of a joke between like dango and tango. So it's da dun 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 da dun, dun. And, you know, it just talks about the three brothers, which are three dango treats stuck on a stick and how they fight. So, you know, you, you know, sibling love. <laughs> yes, of course. I know about it very well. 
So <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. So nice. Can you tell us a little bit more about K Mushi Chan? So if yeah. people have no idea, how did you get this name? What does it mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so a lot of people know that that's kind of like the the name that I go by on the internet. And it originally started because it's a Japanese word and it literally means like little fuzzy caterpillar. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, it's actually a very disliked fuzzy caterpillar. Mm. It's there's like this kind of I don't know if you ever did this growing up, but these little black caterpillars that turn into moths and they kind of like eat everything. Yes, yes. So that's a chemistry. And I was learning Japanese in high school. I actually had a, a Japanese teacher in the States, in Virginia. Wow. And the, she, yeah, she was really, really cool. And she was teaching us all sorts of fun words. And one of the first words I ever asked was, how do you say caterpillar? Like hungry, hungry caterpillar. Because I just I was really into, I don't know, eating. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I was just really into eating. And yeah, and she was like, well, caterpillar could be kemushi. It could be imamushi. But this other type of caterpillar has no hair and it's kind of like a worm. So I was like, okay, let's go with a furry one. That'll be cute. And one day I'll be a butterfly. And it yeah. turns out um, they don't become butterflies. They actually become moths. And <laughs> what I was looking for apparently was owl mushy, the green caterpillars, not the fuzzy caterpillar. Oh. And uh, so my first Japanese mistake has now manifested throughout my entire Japanese career. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't even say, like, one day I'll be a butterfly. It's like, nope, I'll just be a cool moth. Hey, but, hey, nothing wrong with the moths. They're important, too, for sure. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's a really cool moth in Lord of the Rings that uh, helps Gandalf. I'd like to think that maybe I'm a cool one like that. See, but. that's a good way to look at it, for sure. <laughs> I know about making Japanese mistakes and they will care. They will stay with you. People Ooh, are still joking me about some of mine. <laughs> For sure. Oh, the struggle is real. It yes, is. It is. <laughs> Let me ask you, what are a few mm. things that you've learned on your journey to get you where you are today? Yeah. Okay. Where to start? Uh, in general or where um, should we dig in? Well, it's up to you. Uh, however you feel that you'd like to answer it. I would say um, one of one thing that's really worked for me in general across the board is, and sometimes you can't control this, you know, sometimes it's an element of timing, mm-hmm. but if you have an opportunity and you are sincerely interested in it and you're able to get in on this sort of idea as early as possible, like as an early adopter or like the first person in on something like, give it a try. You don't have to give it your all, but give it a try. Because I found that most of my mo- most of my successes or the things that have come easiest in my life have always been so because I was there first. Hmm. And that goes with YouTube, etc. I don't think I could have honestly met such a cool community of what is now 20, no, 200,000 people. Wow. Um, I don't think I could have met any of these wonderful gracious people who click that button um you know (laughs) if i had started today just merely the fact that i was like the only one doing what i was doing way back in the day and that really says something so whatever it is i find that if you if you you know the moment you think you want to do something just give it a try you don't have to give it a thousand percent but just start one piece of it and they're like you know there are lots of fun books about this the most viable product the mvp stuff like that's in business but like the most pared down version of whatever you want to try, just start trying it because once you start, it all kind of flows from there. And then, you know, um, so, so that's always been a big piece for me. And then uh, for language, if you are like me and you like languages just by any chance or music, I know there's a lot of musicality behind what's going on today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, If you have any sort of passions in that direction, um, don't just don't be afraid to make a mistake because even like we were saying, you know, mistakes haunt you or they, they stay with you. But at the same time, they're the ones you never forget. It's so, so I true. find that, yeah, the more you like, it's like I used to learn how to ice skate when I was a little girl. And the first thing they teach you to do is you learn how to fall down because you have to learn how to get back up in order <laughs> to not really 
otherwise, if you don't know how to fall, you're really going to hurt something. So mm-hmm. the same thing with all these other passions. Know how to fall or at least be comfortable with it because then that's how you keep going. I like that. Nice. <laughs> what do you say does success mean to you at this mm. point in your life? What? Wow. What a question. <laughs> <laughs> I try. <laughs> I think... Hmm. Hmm. I think success at this point for me is clarity and peace of mind. Okay. Speak on that a little bit for me. <laughs> uh, so I'm at the ripe young age of 33. And... Oh, you look like you're in your early 20s. <laughs> I'll take it. I will take it. Thank you. I will take it. Thank you. Hi. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I have found that I spent a lot of my time in my 20s, and I feel like a lot of people will say this, I spent a lot of time in my 20s basically coming off of the like the runner's high of college, where everything is 3,000 miles a minute, and you have to constantly strive and produce and prove and all, you know, all that fun stuff. And that's great, because sometimes you just, you have to be in that grind. And, but sometimes you find that you're wasting energy just for the sake of needing to do something True. or needing to impress someone. And I found that I am most successful when I find clarity, when I know what I need to do and more importantly, what I don't. Yes. So I, I, this is a new thing that I've been embarking on, but it sounds so cliche, but literally the power of being able to say no That's and important. being able to stand by it. It's just, it's so important and not all the time, you know, sometimes you do have to grind. Sometimes you do have to do what you don't want, but I have found that at this point in life, having the clarity to know when to say no and the peace of mind of knowing that that's actually better and that everything else is going to work out, you know, then I feel that I'm successful because otherwise I'm all, all types of stressed out and nothing works that way. So it's true. success is the, uh, you know, the mindset to be able to actually get some stuff done. <laughs> it's true. And sometimes when you are doing too many things, you can't give 100% to everything. So oh, therefore completely. things are lacking. And like you say, being able to say no, even if you're a person who's super busy, just saying, yeah. you know what, you know, I'll wait on this or I'll take it. I used to be that way too, completely involved doing too many things. And you're right? right, learning how to decide that maybe this should wait right now. And you know what, this isn't really for me or, you know, no, mm. thank you. I'll have to wait is something that we learn as we get older. Mm-hmm. So it's it's nice to hear you say that because Definitely, as you continue, you will realize that some things are best left alone sometimes. <laughs> right? <laughs> or left for another and day. You're right. And sometimes you're better left with all, with all you know, with a full tank. Mm-hmm. It's true. So it's true. You can give more that way. <laughs> nice. Great answer. I want to play a little fill in the blank. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> I'm happiest when I... Um. Well, slept. <laughs> now, are you are you a person who um takes naps? Are you a napping person? Oh yeah. See, I don't know what that is anymore about naps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may be an oddball, but I can nap anywhere. It's staying asleep that's the problem for me. So I'm a cat napper. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Totally. So just I'll little just knock pieces out for about here. Ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> See, no, that's not. I need to re. I need to really lay down if I can. That's why I don't even take the naps. <laughs> Otherwise, I wake up a little, I, a little groggy and like groggy. Yeah, oh. not as good as I was before I laid down. So oh, for me, I come back like right. I'm like, let's go, let's do it. <laughs> oh, nice. Then that's a plus plus. Definitely. I'm pumped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next one. Mm. I'm hardest on myself when I. I'm tired. No, okay. I'm like, I need to be off the scene. <laughs> no, I'm okay. I'm hardest on myself. Hmm. I'm hardest on myself. Hmm. I think that's just it. I'm hardest on myself. <laughs> Honestly. I think I I'd like to think I'm pretty generous with other people and I I really enjoy uh learning from and working with other people mm-hmm. and you know actually gaining something from these sort of mutual encounters but honestly 
I think I'm just hardest on myself the end. Now, when you say hardest on yourself, meaning what? You're hard on yourself for things that you don't do well or you're hard on yourself for things that didn't get done? Oh, totally. Like, you know, if, for example, I'm I'm a total maniac for learning languages, Japanese specifically, if I make like one little eensy weensy mistake, oh gosh, like, you know, I, one just haunted my brain at this moment. If I answered the phone in front of somebody and, uh, you know, instead of saying like, just a normal phrase of like, oh, this is Loretta. What can I help you with or something? And I somehow answer like, uh, blah, blah. <laughs> somehow that blah, blah just haunts me at 3 a.m. for like the rest of my life. I don't know what that is. Aww. And for anyone else, I would say, no, the point is you tried, you know, make a mistake and you'll never forget. And then at 3 a.m. the next night, I'm like, but why? <laughs> <laughs> why did you do it? <laughs> but why did you make the mistake? <laughs> Mm, so, okay okay i get yeah. it yeah yeah i i don't know if perfectionist is the right word but i'm definitely hard on myself so that that's just something i have to work on though is this something that you grew up with is your yeah. family oh, style yeah. this way um so my family style is basically pretty free and fluid like we were all very much encouraged to jump on the renaissance bandwagon and okay. just do whatever we wanted to do nice. and my mom was basically like oh if you want to do something you know go get a job or go go figure it out if you need help i'll help you but get it done hmm. we were always encouraged to try things um but i've always had a sense of competition and maybe that came from being the only girl okay. or maybe that just came from i mean i don't think anyone can see through these sound waves but I'm I'm a you know African American and I was the only one in my neighborhood for a really long time. So I think I always oh, felt okay. like I had to kind of fight for my share. Mm -hmm. I get it. And uh, yeah, so I just I've always just been very like I, you don't get to slack, okay? Because there's no one else out here. I've always and people are looking at you. Head. You're on and display. they're watching. <laughs> that is so true. You're on display more than maybe others might be. They're watching you. Yeah. So. You got to do. Yeah, the best I've you always can. been. Oh yeah, so that's probably what it is. But one day I'll just learn to say no to myself when those feelings crop up, and just you know, be chill. Be that's chill, what chill. you get to when you get to your forties. <laughs> that's what you learn when you get to your forties, definitely. To be a I'm little softer you, on yourself. Definitely. I'm ready. I'm ready to <laughs> skip right on up. No, take your time. Take your time. <laughs> take your time. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Be in the moment. Be in the moment. Oh gosh. For sure. <laughs> Okay, how about the strength mm. I'm most proud of is? Mm. <gasps> the strength I'm most proud of is mm, my people skills. Okay. Can yeah. you explain? <laughs> I think I really have a fun time when I get to meet new people. And I this, I don't know, they'd have to vouch for it. But I really think that other people enjoy meeting me as well I, I, <laughs> nice. you can say that come on now you, like, well, you know you've been in that. japan too it's long like, you're like um i don't know am i talking about my... <laughs> <laughs> i'm like I'm, i might be being a little a little proud but no um i you know I, if you had to ask me if i was an introvert or an extrovert i would say like in private i definitely need to charge on my own mm -hmm. but i really enjoy meeting new people because to me it feels like almost like a video game and I get to like explore a new level mm -hmm. and they're like, Oh, what's in this corner? Oh, what's over there? And it's just these people's personalities. Like I am in a very distant past. I, uh, I was a bartender actually in New York oh, nice. and somehow there I learned like the gift of just being able to talk to anybody at any point. Mm -hmm. And I just really enjoy that challenge of like, who is this person? What are they about? And, what can we talk about today? Because, you know, you can get into some really interesting conversations and outside of your usual circle of friends. So, I don't know. I, I really like my people my people skills. That's a great strength to have, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Because, you know, you want to feel like it doesn't stop you no matter where you are. You have the courage to feel you can go up and speak. You can still open your mouth and say what you have to say. And you can still show your personality. Um, yeah. Which is really awesome. <laughs> I'll tell you one huge key that really helps is uh, dad jokes. <laughs> when, 
What do we call these in English? Uh, what are these things called? Um, yeah, dad jokes, I was right? Be like dad. Yeah, I was about to say is they're it. dad jokes, right? I guess I don't have any dad jokes. I'm so. full of dad jokes. <laughs> like I am constantly, and yet I've yet to drop one. But now I'm gonna like look for a chance. But I am constant. I do it a lot more in Japanese than in English, just because it's a little bit more forgiving. Oh, but I am okay, constantly okay. saying this goofy stuff that nobody needed, but it definitely cracks a smile. So, and and uh, you know, it, it, jokes can be hard sometimes. But honestly, like when you go up to someone and you don't even know who who they are, et cetera, just finding something to compliment or something like immediately looking for something that you like about them mm-hmm. and voicing that. I find that that's just like it's so easy to to start talking to people when you start on that foot and then suddenly you know you're skipping down the rainbow together it's but. nice <laughs> to start off with a compliment right i love you where's your bag from nothing oh my that. gosh your, your podcast i heard it <laughs> <laughs> and it makes people feel good which is nice yeah people want to talk about themselves as i go on and on <laughs> It's true, it's true. Well, you're the guest, so you can talk about yourself. You're welcome. Hi, everyone. You mentioned about being um, an introvert. Um, I say for myself, I'm an ambivert, which means that I am both. I am, you know, I can be a great time, have a great time with people and love Mm -hmm. being around people, but I need my alone time. And that's when I'm able to recharge and yeah. get myself together so I'm able to give more. So I'm both. Um, maybe, I don't know where I, yeah. Hmm. Maybe you might lie on that. <laughs> yes, yes. Check it out, check it out. <laughs> I'm okay. telling you. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. What are you going to say? Uh, no, I was just going to say, there, there's been a whole new, I, one of the most fun things I've noticed between the 90s and after the internet, and this just sounds so aged, but uh there's just been such the because of everyone being so much more connected it's so much easier to add a nomenclature to things that didn't exist before Hmm. so it's so much easier to identify how you feel or what works for you just because now there are words for it whereas before you know there there wasn't or there wasn't really a chance to access it so it's just cool to be able to just Look up all this stuff. No, you're right. You're right. I'm happy for the day <laughs> of the internet. It is. It is. It has made things cool. Even though I still have my records and my cassette tapes. You know. Oh, you better believe it. Yes. Analogs. I'd have my floppies if I could. Oh my gosh, the floppies! <laughs> <laughs> Just to fight over which colored floppy I could use. I always had to have the bright yellow oh, or the bright orange one. My gosh, the colors of the floppy. Oh, it was a hot day at Staples when we would pick out floppy disk colors. (laughs) (laughs) That's cute. That's cute. Uh, (laughs) Okay, let me ask. Um, Mm -hmm. I process disappointment by... Working harder. Oh, can you elaborate a little (laughs) on that? I I bury myself in work when, when things aren't going my way or when I feel kind of defeated. I just figure, you know, if I just keep my nose to the grindstone, then something's going to come out of this. That's pretty much all there is. It may be unhealthy. This may be bad. Is Does the work <laughs> come out good? I would think so. I mean, obviously, like if I'm actually burnt out, then it could come out better. Mm. But I do know that the way that I process all my bad juju is usually just by working myself through it okay because i find that i don't i don't do that well when i uh initially react to things Mm -hmm. so if i can kind of just work past it and then process it once i've had a little space you can come back usually yeah i can kind of like chew on it a little bit better but that my initial reactions are pretty crazy so (laughs) (laughs) i'm just trying to stay focused until i have a moment to actually like piece through things that's honest that's honest (laughs) nice one more um Mm -hmm. i laugh the hardest at oh oh god i laugh the hardest at hmm 
Hmm. And I know you and you like to laugh on your videos oh, and stuff. I, I... All the time. I love a good laugh. I'm like, I love a good laugh. The one I laugh the hardest at, like animal videos? No. <laughs> uh, and, and I laugh pretty hard at, at news bloopers? No. <laughs> I've been on the internet for too long. Um, hmm. I laugh the hardest. Hmm. Hmm. From stories I relate to, oh. especially people who basically can like convey some sort of truth in a way I never was able to really grasp yet. So like, you know, my elders, my family, people, people who I really, really respect when they remind you that whatever you're going through isn't just some insane malaise. Like it's actually, <laughs> you know, we all go through similar exactly. or very personal things and it is crazy like th those are the moments where i'm like ah! like <laughs> you know when you're just together with the people you really love and you just let loose like i think that's when i laugh at least the longest oh that's nice yeah I, yeah I agree definitely when you're with the people with my family we cut up same we we have a grand time together <laughs> They would just grate out that cheese. It's so crazy. <laughs> I used to ask my mom, do you think other families are like this? And I'm like, mm, I don't know. Because we don't need anybody else. Question. We're fully entertained with just us. Oh, we were the same. Like, my family is very musical. So everything was a song. Oh, and us too. Like, I, yeah. And, oh, my God. And like I said, you know, my parents were singers. So everywhere we go, they're always practicing their own music or they had accompaniment tracks just like rolling in the in the tape deck. And we would always just make up songs and just giggle. And then afterwards say like, gosh, we're a really weird family. I can't imagine anyone else like impromptu harmonized. Yes, that's weirdness. us too. Yes, yes. Oh, gosh. Like it just these. Honestly, we should have just drove up to your house. Oh, my gosh. It would have been full <laughs> on. And, you know, my mom is a retired minister. And um, oh my God. we used to play Bible study with, like, other people in the neighborhood. Yeah. And, like, we yeah. would whoop them, boy. We would be like. Oh, you better believe it. You should have invited me over. <laughs> we love a good board game. We love a good board game. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Oh, that's <laughs> great. That's great. Mm -hmm. We You're have so many neighbors, similarities at least. At least spiritually. <laughs> yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Now, I know you do a lot of things and you're always on the go. And so I'm interested to find out how do you pamper yourself? What do you do? <laughs> what does a uh, Loretta pamper day look like? Ooh. Oh, gosh. What do you, what, I... what happens? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> hmm. Um,. Hmm. Are you a person that's shopping? Or are you going out and getting massages, getting your hair done? What's oh, uh... gosh, yeah. What do I do? It's it's been a while. Um, <laughs> uh oh, we we gonna I have think... to get you get you back up on that. I pamper. know. I I think I might need to actually start a regimen. But no, I think a pampering day for me, if I can, is like going out for a really good meal that I didn't cook myself. I love cooking, mm -hmm. but you know something that somebody else made and if i can bring my dog and like preferably my husband as well and, and just like just kind of be quiet for a while you know because everything else is usually just so busy it's just nice to just like sit there with with my two favorites and Aww. just like breathe a little bit mm -hmm. So sometimes people say, like, are you a beach person or a mountain person, especially here in, in Japan, where both are always 30 minutes away. Um, <laughs> I, I would definitely say I'm a mountain person. Like if I could, I would hole up in a cabin at the top of a mountain and just like watch the clouds go by. And that's actually what that's what we did for our honeymoon. My husband kind of like booked the whole thing as a surprise. Aww. We found this little mountaintop in Vietnam and had like a two house a two-story house to ourselves and just literally watch the clouds underneath go by wow and it was just so ah, like otherworldly <laughs> that sounds amazing yeah and of course the food was great so <laughs> <laughs> yes vietnam yeah the food i'm sure it was on I, point i was like on my tab 
on my tab. Yeah, I would I would say, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a great answer. That's a great answer. <laughs> Also, you use social media a lot, and I know that oh, yeah. you have a lot of followers on YouTube and on mm. Instagram. Um, mm. What is your favorite form of social media, and why? Mm. Mm. So, between photos and video, I definitely prefer video. Okay. Because for me, in every second, you know, and this is all like about appearances, but there's about somewhere between 24 to 60 frames usually at any given second in a video. And one of them's got to look good, right? You know, one of them's (laughs) got to look okay. Whereas photos, oh, they stress me out because I feel like you work so hard to get this one perfect moment. Mm -hmm. Whereas in the video, you're just looking at like a blur of it. Like it's got to look okay in general, right? Mm, So to that light, I kind of prefer YouTube, but then YouTube is just such a journey because you can't just snap one photo you have to edit it and you have to do all of this that and the other so maybe once i get all of my ducks in a row i'll like streaming even more okay but i definitely prefer youtube i like instagram stories not so much for the vanishing effect but just for the like the ease of production mm-hmm. okay that makes sense it is it's, you can just put it out there right just boop 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 Mm -hmm. and then uh (laughs) just like that but uh yeah i yeah i guess for now i'll say youtube despite my current hate for editing (laughs) (laughs) editing is no joke i am learning this as this podcast has been going through yeah it's it's a time consumer it's a time consumer and if you're a perfectionist you are like oh oh man oh forget it (laughs) i was like can i hire somebody like is there somebody hired to do this job i I need them somebody right you and me both let me know when you find them okay (laughs) i will will for sure do you think that the social media is a positive thing Mm, if you have a thick skin okay okay I think it would be really easy to get kind of crushed by it. Obviously, like the idea of like the numbers game, because you really go numb to the idea of what these numbers mean. Like these are actually people who chose to look at your stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, like, let's say it's like, let's say it's a hundred people. What does a hundred people looking at your stuff really look like Mm -hmm. and choosing to say that they like it enough to click whatever button it is that they clicked? Like, that's a huge thing. Oh, two people, one person, that's huge. But, you know, because it's such a little number on a tiny screen, you really just start to see it that way, no matter how much we say we don't. Mm -hmm. And it can be crushing when, for example, just for some reason, for no reason, sometimes just for no reason, it you don't see numbers like you're kind of used to seeing, and that can really crush somebody. Mm -hmm. And then another thing is comments. You know, everyone kind of has this anonymous platform ability to dig into you. And on the flip side, for me, I always say, if you have only good comments, that means you're only reaching the same audience. Okay. And if you have some sort of like ratchetness rolling in, then you know that you've kind of reached a new stratosphere, which can be good and bad depending on what your goals are. But, you know, for a lot of, I would say a lot of us here out there, we a lot of people want to reach a bigger audience or a lot of people want to reach a greater group of people. And after a while, if you're still reaching the same people, it's just an echo chamber. It's true. And yeah. So you have to know and be prepared for, you're going to see a lot of weird stuff out there and you really can't take it personally. You will. I'm not going to lie to you. You (laughs) will take it personally, but you know, just try not to dwell on it. That's good oh. advice. You guys hear that, listeners? Don't take it personally. <laughs> try to to put. I'm not. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. You will take it personally. Just try to get over it as quick as possible. True, true. Thank <laughs> you for that. That's good. That's good advice. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I want to ask you about the ego. Yeah. Um. Do you understand when it's talking to you or not talking to you? In what sense? <laughs> um, meaning that if a situation's happened because you, um, in doing what you're doing in your, Mm-mm. um, your lifestyle of, in your Mm-mm. business that you're doing, um, Mm-mm. meaning when you realize, or like you say, not taking like it personal. Like self-gratifying. Yes, exactly. Self-gratifying. 
um, have you learned the difference between, okay, this is, let me, let me bring this back. Or sometimes we don't want to be hurt. And so we react in a certain way. The egos, they yeah. try to protect us. Yeah. Um, and do you understand when it's happening or not in that sense? Mm-hmm. Or does it get the best of you at times? And Sometimes I, I think I'm pretty sensitive to my own reactions and I know when I'm just full of it and I know when I'm doing things that don't, necessarily serve anyone but but myself Mm -hmm. um but i think most of the time i would hope i'm i'm at least aware of it whether or not i choose to act whatever way i should or shouldn't and that's a whole different story exactly (laughs) just being aware right just being aware of knowing that okay let me let me take a step back for this moment like you say if people are saying nasty comments or they're leaving something that's not right on there sometimes we can flip into a different space um, because of how they've made us feel or what they have said. So knowing the difference between the two is nice. Uh, And it's, again, it's, I mean, in my forties, this is something that I am, I have learned and I am still learning. Um, But when I was your age, it was different. I wasn't thinking about the ego, you know, I was just living. I feel like there's a lot more space for it now too, right? Everything is just so reflective. It's like we're all looking at these shiny surfaces, not realizing how much we're seeing ourselves in them. Mm, like okay. actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, it's a it's one definitely something to keep an eye out for, but it's true. We shall it's true. see. Nice, nice, nice. That's honest. That's honest. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wanna ask you, do you have any final thoughts for our listeners? Anything that you want to leave us with? No, I would say, or actually, yeah, I'll say one thing. And, you know, I would say there's a lot of times people say, be really authentic or manifest your best self or live your best life. And those are all really easy to remember. So they sound nice, but I never really found that they really pointed me in a real direction. Okay. Um, but I do want to say that, like, if you are by any chance kind of, quirky, interesting, or, you know, those moments when you start to self-doubt, like nobody's going to accept me because of X, Y, or Z, or Mm -hmm. because I'm not like them, or this is those elements of you that you doubt because they're so different from other people. Really don't be afraid to dig into that. You don't need to share every second of yourself with everybody in the world, but I, I promise you those, those quirky, really individual pieces of you are actually the pieces that people want to see. Mm. And if, if you care to share or want to share more of yourself with the world, and I'd surely love to see it, um, (laughs) you know, really start wondering about how to show and embrace and really share that piece because, uh, you know, it's not just being your best self for, for yourself or manifesting your best life for yourself. Re- really, like when you are in your zone, everything really starts to fall into place. Mm-hmm. People know this person's about this and not about that. So they know to, you know, your your attitude attracts your surroundings That's so true. and the way that you conduct yourself. So if you are constantly digging into those real bits of yourself you're going to start serving as a magnet for more of this kind of goodness around you. So just really just don't be afraid of those gooey, ooey, gooey, quirky bits on the inside. (laughs) Yes. They say normal is boring. So yeah, we want to feel that. Normal truly is boring. (laughs) Something different is definitely more exciting. And what great advice to leave with people for that. I like it. Definitely. Yeah. (laughs) One final question I like to ask all Ooh. our guests. Is your glass half empty or half full? <laughs> <laughs> it's sparkling. No, I'm just kidding. That's like such a cop out answer. No. Um, <laughs> my glass is hmm. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Ha. Huh. <laughs> I'd never have an answer for this one. I'm like, if it's half empty, it's because I'm pouring out and giving to others. But, you know, honestly, mm. I like to, you know, you know, half full. I'm going to go with full. Okay. okay. I, I'd like to think I'm, I'm on a, a, a building, you know, I'm, I'm 
progressing up mm-hmm. or forward in some way. And maybe that's so I can pour out a little bit, but I, I, uh, I think, you know, I'm constantly on a building up. There's, there's a phrase that they say in Japanese, or there's kind of like a concept here in Japan that I really think kind of encapsulates this, but um, people don't like perfection here. And they do not like the idea of creating something perfectly to perfection. And the reason is that, and, and this comes in like kind of like good luck charms at temples and other things like that as well. You'll see it. I think it, it mostly stems a lot from Buddhism, actually. But the belief is that if you've already reached perfection, then there's nowhere else to go, you know, oh, okay. but to imperfection from there. It's mm-hmm. the same thing when, you know, when people say, well, if you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up, right? It's right. kind of like the opposite end of that. Mm. So there's a lot of buildings where you'll see they'll leave an imperfection or one pillar will be upside down or one little like element of it will be purposely left imperfect because the idea is that if it's perpetually imperfect, it's always getting better. I like that. I like that. So I, I'm ready to be a little bit half full, but still always perpetually filling up. <laughs> yes, we like that. That was we a like very that. long answer. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. No, no problem. No problem at all. You, it made sense. It made sense. Again. Definitely. <laughs> okay, we got there. Yes. Can you let our <laughs> listeners know how they can reach you if they're interested to find out more information about you? Yep. So I'm on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, the easiest way to reach me, honestly, is um, Instagram. Okay. And my my handle across the internet is still Kemushi Chan, which is really long and probably hard to spell out over audio. Um, so honestly, if you just type my name, Loretta, L-O-R-E-T-T-A, and Japan, the rest will, it'll just pop up like that. Okay, Loretta Japan and the information. It, will... it, it'll all just pop up. But yeah, Kemushi Chan is who you're looking for. And Instagram, it's Kemushi JP. Okay. And that's K E M U S H I. Kemushi. Yep. Chan. Yep. Kemushi yes. Chan. Yep. C <laughs> H A N Chan for that. Awesome. Thank you so much yeah. for taking some time out of your busy schedule to be here to be no. a guest on Glass. Thank Half you for letting Moon. me talk your ear off. No, no, no. We were, it was great. It was great. Definitely. <laughs> we're glad that you could be with us today. Appreciate it. Uh, well, I look forward to the, the next episodes and. Yeah tuning in so (laughs) yes we appreciate it thank you thank you and have a great evening you too thank you and thank you to all our listeners for listening in to another episode of glass half full a podcast and a safe platform for everyone to share their life experiences once again i'm your host chris levins please subscribe follow and rate this podcast on Apple Music for more learning experiences. Until next time, know you are blessed. See ya!